everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Listen, do you like tanks, airplanes, live music, and just stuff you don't usually see? If you do, go check out our last video. <laughs> Not many people watch that video, and I think that you would really enjoy it. It was a really cool event, a lot of surprises. Check it out, you may be pleasantly surprised, but that is neither here nor there, because today, we are taking a look at a record player. That's right. We are doing a one year later and then some review of the U-Turn Orbit Plus turntable. I've had it for over a year. What do we think about it? Is it still recommended? Is it still good? How does it, how does it function now after being used on and off for a year? It's gonna be an interesting show, guys. You're not gonna wanna miss this. So again, this is a one year later and then some review, meaning that we've done the full review video and I'll put a link in the description below if you want to go check that out. That'll be a more thorough review. Today, I really wanna talk about having had it now for more than a year, would I recommend it still? It initially got a thumbs up, it's a great turntable, but you know, using it day in and day out, what are the idiosyncrasies? Everything develops an issue or you develop something that you, oh, I like this about it, but I don't like that about it kind of a thing. This is no different. This is a great turntable. It's not perfect. And I'm gonna to explain to you what I mean. Okay, so this is the mid-range for U-Turn. Their entry level is U-Turn Basic with a solid MDF platter. And that used to be 174. You know, like a lot of things, prices, parts, etc., have gone up. So it's now 199. This being the mid-range, the U-Turn Plus series is now 329, and their high end is still 499. So pretty reasonable when you look at it from the standpoint that even their entry level, the U-Turn Basic, is a good mid-range turntable. Their basic is not entry level. In my opinion, it's mid-range. So with that being said, this was a limited edition ultraviolet color. But now you can get it on any turntable you want. You can customize yours and you know pick a lot of different features, which I'll talk about, but this used to be a limited edition and now it is not. All right, the first thing I wanna talk about is dust cover. This is a nice, solid, you know, I don't know if this is acrylic, but it is a, you know, it's a dense and thick, sleek looking, perfectly clear. I don't see any tint to it whatsoever. There's no rubber stops around the front, it lays flush on the MDF plinth. And I'm gonna go ahead and lift this now. Going all the way up, it doesn't seem to like click into place back there or even kind of rest in a noticeably good divot, if that makes any sense. It just kind of keeps going, 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 and then kind of stops. It's kind of springy and spongy. One of the criticisms I had out of the gate the very first time I saw a U-turn, and we've reviewed all of them, was these clips here, these hinges for the dust cover, simply articulated plastic. They're not even, uh, a, they're not even a closure of any type. There's not an actual hinge. We'll look at that closer. So this always feels precariously teetering in the background. That's that, I would say this needs to up, be upgraded to a better hinge, absolutely. But I am glad it has a solid dust cover instead of a fabric one like the um, Marley stirred up. The next thing I wanna talk about is some of the options you can get with the mid-range U-Turn Plus and up, you can get the acrylic platter. Now, I love an acrylic platter. This one is completely smooth, which means that if you have a large record, or any record for that matter, with an indent on the label, there's no recess for that. So there's a possibility that, you know, it's not gonna it's not gonna lay completely flat if that, if that hub is raised and the outer part is not. Now, in practical use, I haven't noticed that being a problem, but when I'm using an acrylic platter mat, usually one side has an in, inset, kind of an indented area to accommodate that. And that goes for 45s and obviously for larger records as well, 12 inch records. Speaking of 45s, you'll, you'll notice there's no 45 adapter. And this just doesn't have it. You have to provide your own, but not a huge deal, but it would be kind of nice if it had one and a place to put it. But you know, it is what it is. 
Uh, if you get the lower version, like I said, it has an MDF platter, which is fine. It's the same kind of fiberboard material that the plinth is made out of. And all of their units have either MDF or you can get a walnut or a maple hardwood plinth as well. So they're all wood based, which is fine. They're solid. This, is, this isn't hollow. I'll show you where the electronics are contained. We've got a simple on and off switch up here. We've got the motor, I'll talk about that in a minute. We've got the tone arm here with a factory installed counterbalance that's adjusted at the factory for the cartridge that it comes with. This one came with a Grado Black. We'll look at that in closer detail in a minute. The only start stop on and off control you have is with this right here. And as you will see in a minute, this simply turns it on. It doesn't start spinning until you rotate the tone arm across the platter. Okay, so here is an area of contention. A lot of people that don't like the U-turns say they don't like it because of the belt and specifically the fact that in order to change speeds from 33 to 45, you have to change from this position on this cog down to the other. Now, it's as simple as doing what I'm doing right here. However, it's very easy for the belt to fall off the platter. Now, you may be saying, as did I, isn't this gonna stretch the belt if you leave it on the larger cog position? And then like, let's say it sits here for a month and then you wanna go back down to there. Isn't that going to stretch? I mean, see how, see how that's kind of loose tension wise? In practice, and it, the belt does fall off sometimes. I'm not gonna say it doesn't fall off, but in practice, it adjusts really quickly. You can see that the motor has sort of a pivot. And this is an AC synchronous motor. They say the speed is rock steady. We're gonna test that here in a minute but this kind of adjusts not only based on the position of the belt, but you know, the tension that's on there. So there'll be more tension when you're in this position right here. It's a one speed motor, obviously. And that's that. If we look at the platter itself, I'm gonna scoot it over here. You'll notice that there's no, there's no indent in the side of the platter. And by the way, the platter is custom made. It's a, they buy sheets of acrylic that are pre-surfaced on the front and back and then they simply either die cut them out or i'm not sure what method these were cutting them out so the front and back are finished so they're able to get the acrylic material at a cheaper price which is really cool because actually one of the hallmarks of u-turn is they source their stuff really smartly and then they pass on the savings to you that's why you're getting a turntable that if this was branded as project or riga you'd be paying, I think, $700 to $1,200 for something at this level, and you're able to get you know, the same thing for a fraction of that. Another way they do it is with their motors. They actually purchase the motors in bulk, and they buy a lower spec motor, but then what they do, and it's more cost effective to do it this way, they cherry pick the high performing motors that perform above spec, and they use only the high end, high spec motors. So it's kind of an interesting thing then they either resell or toss out the rest kind of an interesting method uh, but anyway back to this so you may be saying the first thing i was like oh my gosh this belt's gonna slide and fall off and it doesn't it just doesn't fall off that often it does happen sometimes but in normal play this thing rotating and the belt just stays on there it finds kind of a neutral position in the middle as you can see here see how it kind of scoots itself up that's no channel there's no groove in there whatsoever. If you look at the lowest end U-turn, the $199 basic, or the top of the line, 499 unit, you're gonna see, I would say 90% of the record player is identical. Most of the stuff is the same. The same armature and gimbal movements, counterbalances, everything. Lift shelf, cueing lever are gonna be the same. On some of the entry level ones, like the, the basic actually does not come with the queuing lever and shelf, I'm doing backwards, queuing lever and lift shelf, but you can add that on. You can kind of customize your record player and add that on. That's one of the things you can customize. So for me and my shaky hands, that's a must, but it's the same queuing lever, same shelf that you'll find on the highest end units, the same gimbal, the same counterbalance, et cetera, et cetera. It's got a nice rubbery, grip here that grabs on to the tone arm, which is nice rather than a rigid plastic one that most turntables have. And this feels like an aluminum 
tone arm, by the way. Let's look at the cartridge and head shell. So like I said before, there's a number of different cartridges that they offer. This particular one at the time came with the Grado Black. Now, I believe this come, if you get the mid-range uh, U-Turn Plus, you get the Ortofon OM5E. But again, you can change that up if you want to customize your turntable. So this is a good entry-level cartridge, but it's a very warm sounding one. So I love the Grado. To my ears, this sounds good. Next, I'm going to talk about something I don't particularly like about what we are looking at here. And that is the fact that it does not use a standard half inch mount for the head shell. Instead, it uses a proprietary fixed head shell. And this piece right here, including the finger lift, the head shell assembly, and where it attaches to the aluminum tone arm is all plastic. So even taking off this cartridge and putting it back on, as I have done because of the fact that I needed this for a different show. I needed this cartridge for a different show. Um, the plastic was already, where the screws go in, was already showing kind of a groove, kind of wear from where those screws had dug into the plastic a little bit. So it's kind of soft, and you don't want to be swapping cartridges all the time. Number one, because the head shell is light, you have to do it while it's affixed. You can't take it off like a half inch mount, work on it on the head shell, and then mount the entire thing. You have to do all the work while it's attached here. So it's a little bit finicky. The other thing is this comes factory set. So this counterbalance position is set for the cartridge that it comes on. And it looks like there's a thumb screw. You could probably slide this up and down and adjust. I haven't done that. I'm sure that's how it works just based on looking at it. But, you know, that's a consideration to make as well. Also, the fact that the anti-skate, yes, there is anti-skate, is set at the factory. It's not user adjustable. So the fact that you can't adjust that is kind of a bummer because if you put something on with a heavier tracking force, you need to be able to adjust that anti-skate because the anti-skate value to begin with usually matches that of the counterbalance. So that's a bit of a bummer there. I will say this though, it is a beautiful turntable. I, I really do like it. I do like, in spite of its flaws and kind of, you know, uniquenesses, I do think it's cool. So I'm going to show you another reality of this turntable. The belt, by the way, is enormous. It's a huge belt, tubular rubber. It's not very elastic, as you could imagine. It's a belt. It's not a rubber band. But I wanted to take off the actual platter itself. It just lifts right off of there. And as you can see, like I was saying, it's just a slice of acrylic polished front and back. I'm gonna set that off to the side for right now because what I want to focus on is this main bearing. They use an inverted bearing system, which is really cool. Uh, it does have a plastic spindle, which I'm like, I kind of like that to be metal. I don't, I don't really particularly like the fact that that's plastic, completely functional, of course. But what is great about this is this gimbal system is so well balanced and so functional that as you can see, there's no resistance. This thing will spin for days and it's a very solid. There's no platter wobble. It's an amazing thing. One of the very best things about U-Turn. Now let's say you're done showing that off to your friends. By the way, I do want to kind of give this a once over lightly while I got this off here. Because you can see through that beautiful platter, you want to be able to make sure it's dust free, right? All right, so I'm going to put this guy, and this is very heavy, by the way, this platter. It's got a lot of mass inertia. So when it starts spinning, you know, things in motion like to stay in motion kind of a thing. This needs to be washed off a bit, but that's okay. Um, putting the belt on, no bueno. It's very annoying and hard to do, and you have to do this when you put it together. So I'm going to go over here. My voice may get echoey because I'm stepping away from the mic. Best way to do it is to start by holding it firm with your fingers there and slowly work your way back. Oops, I'm hooked around there. That's not good. This is the hardest and most annoying part. If this belt comes off, but here's how to put it on. So kind of holding it there. If I let go, it'll fall. See how it fell? And I didn't fake that. That was real. <laughs> this, again, is the worst part about a U-turn. And from this standpoint, it's good to have a one-speed motor because it's the most consistent speed-wise, and you don't have to worry about there being two positions. Look at that. See how it was loose enough that it just fell right off. They do give you an extra belt, by the way. Barely enough tension to hold that on. So when you get into the mid and upper level models, 
The preamp is an option. This one does not have a preamp. You can tell because it's got this small box. It's literally cabled directly from these gold-plated RCA jacks to the tone or to the actual cartridge itself. The ones that have a built-in preamp, this box is a little bit bigger to accommodate that built-in preamp. And then over here we have a power module and that is it. Looking at the bottom, we see this wire here that connects that on and off switch on the front back to the power module. There's three rubber feet with a little bit of pivot action. And you know, three points of contact is the best. That's the most stable. And then the bottom of the bearing as well. That's all there is to it. So the actual plinth is solid MDF wood. There's not, that's not hollow. I mean, that is, and it's heavy too. It's a very heavy, not very heavy turntable, but it's a good heavy turntable. I have noticed this too on a couple different ones is that this is just laying there and it kind of has a tendency to pull out of the power module box a little bit. So I kind of like that to be tighter there. So sometimes you can kind of force it in a little bit there. It's not a big deal. Oh yeah, here's the hinge by the way. It's literally just a piece of plastic that's thin in the middle to allow it to rotate. It's screwed into the plinth, but it's only, you know, slid onto the dust cover itself. So you can remove the dust cover, but this is a weak link. I've never had them fail. I've had the heavy dust cover kind of like fall down when I don't want it to, but they've never broken anyway. Okay, now I'm going to get the power supply for this unit. I'm gonna show you how it operates and we're gonna give it a little bit of a sound test, just an ambient sound test as well. We're gonna to need to get a preamp. My Pluto preamp from U-Turn is actually being used right now on my Technic. So rather than pull that out of there, I'm just gonna grab something else. For the purposes of the show, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so the U-Turn products use their own branded adapters. So this is the one for the turntable. If you're using their preamp, it's got an equally you know, beefy power adapter, 12 watts. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in and we'll just talk about initial functionality to begin with and go from there. Okay, with our power cord attached, we're gonna go ahead and flip it on, and again, it turns. Okay, I was wrong. I thought you had to move the tone arm over to make it rotate, but apparently this starts and stops the rotation. So there you go. I haven't used it in a little bit. So let's go ahead and yeah, just the speed change is all done by you know going like this with the belt and switching between the 33 RPM setting and the 45. And back to what I was saying earlier, it's a fair argument to say it'd be nice if it was a two speed motor instead of having to touch the belt. Some people get really freaked out about touching the belt. Oh, the oil's in your skin, it's gonna ruin it all. I've never had the oils in my skin ruin a belt. That being said, yeah, in theory, possible, feasibly, you could you know have an issue. I've never had an issue. So now we went from the wider setting to the, the uh, tighter setting now. And as you can see, there's a little bit of a spin before it, you know, got enough tension on that belt. Let's check the speed accuracy. Okay, we got our stroboscopic disc on here. We're gonna start with 33 RPM. So we're gonna be looking right there on that band. And let's see what happens. How accurate is this speed? Ooh, that's pretty dang accurate. They're right, that's amazing. Look at that. Yeah. That is, uh, that's a pretty accurate speed consistency there. Now I am going to off camera, switch the belt to the larger position, the larger position for 45. And we're gonna be looking now at the next band up, oh, that one right there. Give it a second to get up to speed and yeah, hair slow, a hair, hair, hair slow. Cause it's marching to the right just a tad bit, but that's not going to be an audible thing. You're not going to be audibly able to say, oh, that's, you know, too slow. That is pretty dang accurate. I'm not sure how to adjust speed. I don't think you can adjust speed on an AC synchronous motor. If it was a DC motor, I think you can, but I'm pretty darn sure this is AC synchronous. So speed, as far as I'm concerned, not an issue. Let's check tracking force of that tone arm. It's kind of bouncing around, but it's just over a gram and a half, which is good for the grado black. 
So yeah, easily adjustable counterbalance actually. You just unscrew that thumb screw and it slides up and down very easy. The anti-skate on the other hand is a little bit different matter. Another thing that isn't so great about having this be plastic is that if you want to use a carbon fiber brush like this, oops, and ground out the static, you can't do that because that's not metal. Sometimes when you're grounding out static electricity, simply touching those bristles to a metal spindle, you hear a nice pop as that static electricity is zapped out. So obviously with a plastic one, you can't do that, which is frustrating. Okay, so we've got Enoch Light and the Light Brigade on there. Again, this is the stereo version of Total Sound Shock. Fun record, and the copyright bots don't mind if we use a little sample of it, so that's a good thing. We're just gonna do an ambient sound test. I've got a speaker here locally. We're gonna put the microphone by the speaker. Again, this isn't a thorough review. I just wanted you to hear something, to be able to hear what this turntable sounds like to some degree. And I'll give you my final thoughts after that. Okay, I had a little bit of a buzz in my speaker there. Forgive me for that. The turntable though, dead silent. It's a rock star. It sounds amazing. A lot of people may have already put in a comment saying, how in the heck can you connect a grounding terminal? There's no grounding terminal on the back of the turntable. And if you're using an external preamp, you do need that. So how does that work? Well, the U-turn does it in a unique way. They actually ground on the left terminal stereo jack. So the RCA jack, the left stereo RCA jack, carries the grounding signal back to the preamp, which is interesting. It works. And, you know, there you go. So my final thoughts are, it's still a winner. It's quirky. I don't like the plastic permanently mounted headshot. Although, if you go like this, little trick, little trick here, if you put the tone arm like that, it lifts it up into a pretty easily accessible place to work on it if you want to uh, change the cartridge. But I wouldn't recommend it because your anti-skate is tied to that. We did verify that you can actually adjust this very easily, just thumb screws and loosens. Sound quality is fine, it's good. It's what you're really hearing is the cartridge because it's literally the wires out of the cartridge, you know, out the back of the turntable into your preamp and sound system. The belt, I understand where people are coming from on that. It does work at the end of the day. It's rock solid on speed. It's more steady speed-wise than my Technics. It does a great job, but you do have to handle the belt and it can fall off and that can be annoying. So. I would say yes, it is still approved. Yes, it is still recommended with a little asterisk next to that. And if you can, you know, you don't have a problem with what we've talked about, then it's still recommended. A lot of people will come to me and say, well, what should I get? Should I get a Fluence? Like somebody recently said, RT85 or U-Turn. And that's really, really tricky. I love what these guys are doing. It's made in America, hand-built. You know, these are made with heart. These aren't mass produced. And for that, I think that the, this gets the edge. If you're looking for that audio file, you want to be fully engaged with your music. You want a manual experience. If you don't want to deal with the idiosyncrasies, touching the belt, etc., then yeah, Fluence is a great option because you can change speeds with a knob or a switch. They're so close, so neck and neck. And I probably would change my mind, you know, depending on the day. But there you go, guys. Thumbs up. Recommended. Let me know what you guys' thoughts are on U-turns in the comments down below. All right, my friends, and that is going to do it for today. If you're interested in this turntable, check out a link in the description below. But that is going to do it for today. Happy record hunting. We'll see you next time.